What if I told you that with a little bit of prep on your weekends, you could have some amazing frozen burritos that's better than store-bought? These are perfect on-the-go items that you can have whether you're heading to class, going to work, or even working from home. Your at-home frozen burritos is going to save you money and it's going to taste better. Today we're doing one of my favorite combinations and that is a sausage, egg, and cheese breakfast burrito that you can really have any time of the day. Now let's get started by getting our prepped items out of the way. Now I want the onions to be a supporting part of the ingredients. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a very small dice. Cheese! Now if you want to use pre-shredded cheese, by all means go ahead and also feel free to sub in your favorite kind of cheese. I am a huge fan of sharp cheddar because it's gonna really convey that cheesy flavor. So I have here a block of sharp cheddar that I want to grate here. Now I suppose better to have too much cheese than too little. All right, now typically when I'm sauteing onions, what I like to do is saute them in oil. But because these are frozen burritos that we're gonna reheat, I don't want there to be a lot of oil in the stuffing. So I am going to just use some cooking spray. Now we're only partially sauteing here, and so we just wanna get them nice and soft. I got here two pounds of breakfast sausage. I am going to add in my sausage now, over the onions. I'm gonna let this cook for a little bit. I love the combination of pork sausage and sage. So I'm gonna add in some ground sage and also some black pepper. that stirred in. Okay, let's do a few cracks of black pepper. Now we're gonna finish cooking up the sausage and then we're gonna set it aside and work on our eggs. Oh, the sage makes it smell so good. Moving on to the eggs, remember we are doing a large meal prep, so you're gonna want a large enough bowl. If you like milk, go ahead. I have a milk substitute. You can also use water if you like. All right, I'm gonna give it some few cracks of pepper. Now I am going to whisk. Do so you wanna get the pan hot first? This is a lot of eggs to scramble at once. I would recommend doing it in batches. What you want to make sure is you don't overcook these eggs because they are going to get a little bit of a warm finish when you work it in and melt the cheese into the burrito filling. Okay, round two. I got my eggs ready, let's bring this all home. I got my pot of sausage back on now and it is warming up and what we wanna do is use some gentle heat. I'm gonna fold in the cheese and the scrambled egg. You wanna get it just melty enough so that the flavors kind of combine and get sticky and a little bit gooey. Cheese! Okay, we are adding the eggs last because I wanted to spend the least amount of time on the heat. I don't want the eggs to overcook. Let's fold in the eggs. Now if there are clumps, feel free to stab at it and just kind of break things apart. You want to have things generally evenly mixed so that when they're stuffed in the burrito, you're gonna have uniform flavor. Now let's get to wrapping your burritos. You can make your tortillas more pliable by heating them briefly in a microwave, or you can also heat them briefly on a hot pan. 
This is the way I've been taught to roll a burrito, and so this is the way I've been doing it. I also like working with a larger tortilla. They're gonna be a lot more forgiving. Also, I think you're gonna have the right ratio of the tortilla to the stuffing. The flap of the tortilla that's closest to my thumbs when I'm holding my hand like this, I'm gonna bring up like this. Then, fold my left side over, and then fold my right side over, and then I'm gonna start rolling. Okay, and keeping this like this. So here is your burrito. Everything comes down to personal preference. This is the sort of the, the size of the burrito that I like, um, where I'm having a good ratio of tortilla to stuffing. You may certainly want to do it where you're doing larger burrito. This is an optional step that you may choose to skip. I like to do it because it adds texture and flavor. And what I like to do is brown or sear the tortilla a little bit on a dry pan so that when you reheat the burrito, you're gonna have that kind of toasty exterior. I'm just doing this one for demonstration purposes, but I do have a big enough pan that I can do multiple at the same time. This is kind of the way I like it. The way you like it might be a little bit different. I kind of get it like this on both sides, then I'm ready to proceed to packaging in the freezer. Okay, so three ways you can consider storing your frozen burritos. One way, you can just put them all flat on a tray, freeze them, and then put them in a large bag. In my freezer, I don't have a space where I can have a large bag of one thing. I package them individually and it's easy for me to fit in the freezer and then I can just take one out when I need. Now, the other two ways are parchment paper and aluminum foil. And what I like about the parchment paper is if you're someone that's taking it to work and there is no like toaster oven there, or it's just a microwave, you can just keep it in the parchment paper and just plop it in and get it warmed up. If you do have a toaster oven uh, and you prefer aluminum foil, that's great. 